Let's just study Martin Luther. Because the very basis for duping the Lutherans into accepting something like this is what Martin Luther supposedly wrote, right? And said. So let's study what it's all about. So let's go to uh, a normal Christian source, not from my church. What are transubstantiation and what are constant substantiation? Martin Luther changed his view later to consubstantiation because he had a growth in Christian experience, but consubstantiation was also still wrong. And did he later change to the full Protestant view? Yes or no? That is the question. So let's look it up. What is the difference between transubstantiation and consubstantiation? The word transubstantiation derives from the Latin trans, a cross, and substantia, substance. The term is employed in Roman Catholic theology to denote the idea that during the ceremony of the Mass, the bread and wine are changed in substance into the flesh and blood of Christ, even though the elements appear to remain the same. This doctrine has no basis in Scripture. There are traces of the dogma in some of the post-apostolic writings and in the concept was vigorously defended in the early 9th century AD. It was adopted at the Fourth Lateran Council in 1215, formalized by the Council of Trent, and was reaffirmed at the Second Vatican Council. Rome never changes. Just a fact. Okay, what did Martin Luther believe initially? Consubstantiation is a term commonly applied to the Lutheran concept of the communion supper. Though some modern Lutheran theologians reject the use of the term because of its ambiguity. So modern theologians should all reject it, not just some. But nevertheless, this is what they say. The expression, however, is generally associated with Luther. The idea is that in the communion, the body and blood of Christ and the bread and wine coexist in union with each other. Luther illustrated it by the analogy of the iron put into the fire where both fire and iron are united in a red-hot iron, and yet each continues unchanged. So, really not much difference between transubstantiation and consubstantiation. And the Protestant world argued with Luther. Zwingli argued with Luther on the issue. And uh, most of the Protestants wouldn't accept it. And his own theologians argued with him and didn't accept it. Martin Luther was... He was... He was clinging to some of the aspects of the Catholic theology. But, ha, ah, what a really Table Talk, Martin Luther. What a magnificent book. And I've referred to it many, many times. This book has such a phenomenal history. Every single Protestant on the planet should read this book. This is the book where his friends and his colleagues wrote down what Martin Luther had to say around the table when he was not constrained by formal circumstances. So what came out of his mouth is what he actually felt and believed. Beautiful. The book was banned on pain of death. Anybody who had the book was sentenced to death by Rome. They dragged the people out murdered them, slaughtered them if they had the book. Eventually they said, if you bring the book and we burn them, then we, they will be free from the sentence. So the books all disappeared. It had been translated even into High Dutch. And there the book was gone. And then, centuries later, someone was building a house and they dug up the foundations. And in the foundations, wrapped in wax and sealed in wax, they found a Dutch copy of this book. And even then they were so afraid of the authorities they smuggled it out to, to England. And there was a gentleman there who was working at the king's court and he knew both languages and he was to translate it and uh, he never got round to it. And one night he had a dream. You can read it in the cover of the book. One night he had a dream and he dreamt that an old man with a white beard said to him, you must translate that book. And he said, yes, oh, he got such a fright, he was going to do it, but forgot about it again and didn't do it. A week later, he was arrested. Nobody gave any charges. He was thrown in jail because the 
In his dream, the man said to him, I will give you time to translate it. And there he languished in jail, I forget the exact years, but could be seven years. And he translated the book, and eventually, through circumstances, it uh, ended up with the archbishop, and eventually ended up in the English parliament. And we spoke about the English parliament yesterday, which was extremely pro Protestant. And as a consequence of reading this book, the English parliament didn't really want to be involved, or the Protestants didn't want to translate everything that Luther said because of what he had said about consubstantiation. But listen to what it says in this book. This is now what the parliament decided. Whereupon they made report, dated the 10th of November, 1646, that they found it to be an excellent divine work worthy of the light and publishing, especially in regard that Luther, in the said discourses, did revoke his opinion, which he formerly held, touching consubstantiation in the sacrament. Whereupon the House of Commons, on the 24th of February, 1646, did give order for the printing thereof. So the reason why they permitted the reprinting of this marvelous book was because Martin Luther had given up consubstantiation. Is this anywhere in this modern report of the Roman Catholic Lutheran dialogue? No, they deny it, because it's deceptive. So I want to make sure, Martin Luther, what exactly did you write? This is Martin Luther speaking. Even so, we must let the words of Christ remain and speak of the sacrament in suis terminus in their terms, with such words as Christ used and spake, do this must not be turned into offer this. So the sacrifice is gone. What signifies it to dispute and wrangle about the abominable idolatry of elevating the sacrament on high to show it to the people? What did Martin Luther call that? An abominable idolatry. What does the joint document say? You can do it, because it's really the body and the blood. So let's not argue about how long it is there, but it's venerable. Hello? And they're saying that Martin Luther believed this. Yes, he believed it in the beginning. He didn't believe it in the end. So this is deception of the highest order, which has no approbation of the fathers, and was introduced only to confirm the errors touching the worship thereof, as though bread and wine lost their substance and retained only the form, smell, and taste. This the papists called transubstantiation and darkened the right use of the sacrament. Whereas even in Popedom at Milan from Ambrose's time to the present day, they never held or observed in the Mass either canon or elevation of the Dominus Vobiscum, the Lord be with you. So, Martin Luther denied everything that's in that document that they claim he believed. Case closed.